Do they look cute? Yep. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today's Friday, and we read Luke chapter number 10. When you read through this chapter, I want you to understand that what you're getting here is a practical definition of what it means to follow Jesus. Now, just kind of follow the big picture of this chapter. So as a Christian, we are witnesses because at the very beginning of this, what happens? Jesus calls his disciples and he sends them out. He sends them out two by two. They go into all of these places. Not only are they sent out, but they're sent out to prepare the way for Jesus. And so instead of then going and, and taking an easy path, they're really sent into some difficult places. So as they're going through this, it, Jesus even tells them, he says, pray for the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. So they're not supposed to be praying that the, that the work would be easy. They're supposed to be praying that while they are witnesses, others will join them in this work. So what does a Christian do? Well, first of all, we're witnesses. The next thing I think is that we're probably neighbors. Because when you go through this, what you're following, what you're following through in seeing Jesus teach his disciples is that, well, that, that what we do as believers, we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength, and then we love our neighbor as ourselves. And that's when Jesus gives this beautiful parable of the, of the parable of the Good Samaritan. And then we find out in that story, we find out the definitions of what it means to be a, a neighbor. And so the, the key word in that story is going to be compassion. It's an, it's an inward desire to do good to somebody else. And so in that story, you've got these, you've got a priest and you've got a Levite who literally walk by a crime scene and have no compassion. And yet you have a Samaritan who comes down the way and he sees this Jewish guy and he picks him up and he takes care of him. Well, who made him do that? Nobody. He did it because he was the man's neighbor. Now, they didn't live next door to each other, but he saw all the people around him everybody as his neighbor. Why? Because we all came from Adam. Therefore, we, we have a covenant of kinship. We are, we are all neighbors to one another. And so what are we doing as believers? Well, you, you take that little moment from that guy. Remember, Jews and Samaritans were kind of enemies in the way they treated, treated each other. So in this story, you've got a, you've got a Samaritan treating a man with compassion, and the man hated the Samaritan. Prior to this story, he, this Jewish guy would have had very bad feelings about a Samaritan, but the Samaritan had compassion toward him. Well, what does a believer in Jesus do? Well, we're witnesses. He sent them out. He, we're, also, we're also neighbors, people of compassion to others. Well, then I think we're also worshipers because then you end this chapter with this wonderful moment where Mary and Martha are kind of at odds with each other. And so you've got Mary and she's always moving. In every story you find her, she's always moving. So she's working around the house in this story at the death of Lazarus. She's running back and forth trying to find Jesus, trying to, you know, get here, there, and yonder. But every time you find, every time you find Mary in the story, she's always at Jesus' feet. So in this story, she's at his feet and she's listening to his words and even at the death of her own brother, she finds herself uh, falling at the feet of Jesus. And they, you got both of these set up. So what do we as Christians do? Well, we're witnesses, we're neighbors, and we're worshipers. And if we can get those three things in line, in order, and under the authority of God, then now we start looking like what it means to be a biblical disciple. What'd you get out of it? My takeaway is something I've been chomping on and chewing on for a little while as we've read, as I've read through the New Testament and even from my time in Isaiah. Um, we also talked about it in prayer group on Tuesday morning. So it's in the section where it's in my Bible. It says, Jesus rejoices in the Father's will about uh, verse 21. Jesus is saying, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. And it sounds funny kind of, but if you look at what's been going on, Jesus has been chased around and followed around by the Pharisees who are supposed to be wise and understanding. They study God's word. They know better than this guy who's saying he's the Messiah. They know the word better. They know the law better and they follow it better. He's being crazy and doing things on the Sabbath and he's pushing back on all these great laws, which are really their own man-made rules around the law that God has created. 
And what Jesus has been preaching is completely upside down from all these religious people. And he keeps saying, you have to accept God as a little child. You have to come to him like a child. In, the, in his Sermon on the Mount, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. We will not know our need for God until there's a great humbling in our own heart. Until we come to the end of ourselves and we know that we have a need. you And I think it's Pops that says all the time, like, in order for me to get saved, because he was saved later, he grew up in church, but he was saved later, he had not recognized in his own life that he was lost. He said, in order for me to get saved, I had to figure out that I was lost. And that's all of our stories. And if you watch how Jesus walks around and ministers to people, it's kind of mind-boggling how he shares these parables that are difficult to understand. And even the disciples are like, why are you telling the story like this? And he says, um, for those who are meant to understand this, they, they will understand it. But those who have hardened hearts, their hearts are not ready. They're not seeking God. Then they won't, it won't make sense to them. And we see this time and time again through all these chapters. And all I can think about is that that passage in Isaiah, I think it's chapter 65. And we just shared it, I think, last week. But it was Jesus saying, well, it's his words that he preaches later in Luke that we hear about. But he says, I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am. To a nation that was not called by my name. To the Gentile people. That's us. Um, I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. He reveals himself. And then he spreads his hands out. And he waits for us to respond. He All he wants us to do is to seek him. And um, something we talked about in prayer group is Jeremiah 33.3. Deshae Budratis tells us that's what her grandma called um, Jesus' phone number, Jeremiah 33, 3, because it says, Call to me, and I will answer you. I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. And so, as we read through this, I'm fascinated with how Jesus um, shares his word, shows his miracles, because I'm also fascinated with the people who are seeing these mighty, wondrous things before their eyes and their hearts are not ready. They're not seeking God. How do you see that and you not respond? And the thing is, Hearts are not changed by great shows. Hearts are not changed by even miracles. Hearts are changed when they humble themselves and they seek seek after God. And God is waiting with open arms. He's waiting on us to call him. And so I love watching how Jesus shares the gospel. And I hope that I'm soaking that in and, um, and changing my own life. Adjusting the way that I walk through this life so that I can share with others around me in this world with that same truth, but also grace, full of grace and full of truth all at the same time. I like it. I think that says it all. Hope you had a great day. We'll see you on Sunday and Jesus is going to calm a storm on Sunday. I thought you were going to say so, he's going to come back. <laughs> well, he might. He might. We'll see. So, but we're going to talk about him calming the storm on Sunday and, and we look forward to seeing you there if he doesn't come back before then. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Jesus is going to come back. <laughs>